Hi, my name is Ken. You may have seen me in such YouTube videos as Mars Crew 165 or Alien Costume by Ken. Today we're going to go over my second Alien Xenomorph costume and on this one I have a mouth that can move in and out. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. I'll try to answer all of your questions. My first Xenomorph costume never had a mouth that could move. In fact, I just Velcroed it in to the top right here. The helmet is just a cheap play hard hat. We picked it up at a kid's fair. It's not an actual hard hat. On my first costume, I used thermoplastic beads to make the teeth and it worked really well. These teeth are very strong, very solid, and I really liked how these uh, teeth turned out. On my second costume, I used foam clay to shape and create all of these teeth here. Now the foam clay is actually a lot lighter, but it will break if I do, if I'm not careful, it will break the tooth. I bought long number 6-32 screws that have a 5 16th nut so that all the hardware is one uniform size on this alien head. Simply cut the bolts down to the length desired, making sure to put a nut on before you cut so that removing the nut will make it sure that the threads are good. I used one 48 inch aluminum L bracket. I cut it into two pieces and the spacing in between is based on the water bottle fitting in between there and then the actual styrofoam, the foam insulation that I use, which is two inches and the L bracket will sit right in here. Now this one is actually from my original costume. I have not made the one for my second alien head yet. That will be a second video. Now all the hardware for this head came from the local home repair store. Like I said, I used uniform uh, hardware to make it super easy. I connected the helmet in three places. One, two, and a third spot is right up in here. These cables for the lips, just your picture frame cables at the store. I was able to buy a small spool of it. The upper lip has two, two of them. They're guided with little tubing right here. And then it's also adjustable right here. I have this adjustable guide. I can move it in or out. And then over here, I can actually bend them to put them in the place that I want to. So I can make sure that they get fairly close to the gums and the teeth, you know, but not too close, not too far away. Now the bottom one, I tried to use two guides. It just wasn't working. There's too much resistance with this flex cable that comes out and back to the servos in the back. Here is another view underneath of the center bracket that goes through here and where I had to cut holes so that the push-pull tubes and this flex cable can go up and in there. So again, to reduce the resistance on the push-pull cable, I just use a zip tie, strengthened with a little push-pull rod as my guide here. I went to the hardware store and bought a small strip of aluminum and I bent it around to make this. And then I used scrap aluminum, but you can buy this again, aluminum at the store. You just drill out and cut different pieces to form what you need. I measured different degrees, where to put the pivot point for the chin strap. And the further back you get with the chin strap, the more jaw movement you will get. With the electronics, my first costume, I didn't want servo noise, but with the Bluetooth speaker that's gonna sit right up here, there's so much background noise of the, of the alien breathing and everything, I've, I'm going with the servos this time so I can get that inner mouth. These two switches, one of them controls the mouth, one of them controls the lips. I used to have one on this other side. I need to remove this hardware because I had to have them both on one side so that my tongue can actually hit both of them when I want the lips to open and the mouth to come out. This is the power right here for this, that goes to the batteries. But the switch comes up here, I split the, the wires and they both go into, uh, these two boards control the lips from this servo here and this servo here. This one is a high torque servo that controls the movement of the mouth for it to go in and out. The wiring wasn't too hard. I do have one battery pack and it's jumpered from here to here to provide power to the two servos. These circuit boards are spark fun 
servo trigger boards. I bought them off of Amazon, but if you go to the website, you can actually find them for a little bit cheaper. They work very, very well. There's three settings on them. It controls point A, point B, and then the time. And all you have to do is rotate it a little bit. It only moves about 120 degrees. You're not going to get a full 180 degrees with these servo boards. You can reprogram them. I decided not to. Be careful with these servo boards here. I did burn one up. What happened was with these battery connectors, this bag that I bought, they were wired, the red and black wired differently than the battery positive and negative. So I had to take, repin these, redo the connections here, and likewise on the chargers, reverse the polarity. Because initially when I hooked this up, I had the red and the black backwards and I burned up one of these servo boards. With the water bottle here, my previous alien head did not have a vent, so it would drip water for a couple of minutes, five minutes or so. I thought it was awesome, and then it stopped dripping the water. I made all kinds of different slime. Ends up cheap shampoo works the best for the slime if you want to use slime, but when I'm out trick-or-treating with the kids, I don't want to be having slippery stuff fall all over the place. Down below, I have a zip tie, just a simple zip tie back here to undo that to help keep it centered, bring it down, and then I can just fill it with water and then stick it on back up. The tube at the top here, on the previous head, I used a lot of glue to glue it in, but to try to keep this one a little bit lighter, I just used uh, aircraft safety wire to uh, attach it, drilled small holes, and I tested it. I put a little bit of hot glue if it was leaking too much. And the water bottle right here is held in place with this aluminum bracket that I made. If I end up using different water bottles, this is adjustable. So I just cut the screw off here and then it can pivot open here so I can get the water bottle to go down. The Bluetooth actually sits right up here. This foam is to help protect the Bluetooth so it doesn't move in and out. I have a little metal lip right here to hold the Bluetooth speaker in so it doesn't go anywhere. Here is underneath. Now most of the metal bracket you see right here, I secured it here and it's the same metal piece that is secured up here so it's two spots on each side to help hold it uh, together. And I use rubber washers up here to try to help with the uh, sound suppression because I didn't want the servo noise to travel through the metal bracket here. And then the push-pull tubes, you can order them on the uh, internet. Um, I have a, this small tube here is the flex cable for the lower lip. And again, it's just a lot of trial and error to get it to find the right spot. Here's the flexible cable. Here's metal, the solid metal tube, and a lot of trial and error to get it figured out exactly where it needs to go. Here is a video of the servo setup. I have just the three servos. They are on a small clipboard that I cut apart a little bit to make room for the water bottle, which will uh, come in from the bottom. And then here's the power line that comes to the right side. And this servo right here is the high torque servo that will control the mouth movement. I made extra servo arms out of the aluminum and secured them to the servo arms, as you can see there. And also on the bottom, the longer the arm, the greater the movement, so that when it moves like that, and of course it has to clear the lip servo up above, So here's the lower lip, this is the mouth, and this one is the upper lip. And you can see how it moves that upper lip motion up here. Here are a lot of materials that I used off of Amazon. I just bought numerous assorted sizes of servo cables. Here's the wires uh, for the battery connectors. I bought separate batteries and I did again rewire the connectors here so that it would match these new uh, battery wires here. 
Gorilla Glue, Clear Grip, Liquid Nails Fuse It. Again, it attaches metal and most plastics and more. And it doesn't really matter what paints you use. This is cheap, it was like 50 cents. Dark gray, black, other gray, and then for the teeth, I just used an airbrush to paint those all on. I used liquid nail polish, clear nail polish, along with this clear gloss that bonds to plastic. Okay, so that's a small mouth with the teeth that move and articulate. Now with this small mouth, what happens is when the servo pushes it out, it grabs the fishing line, which is stationary, and it's hooked to right here for the lower, and the upper actually travels back here, and the upper fishing line hooks in right up there. And I use a rubber-coated washer so that this fishing line can't just slip. So the tooth movement on the small mouth is basically this is what you can't see very well. I put material over the top and it's just a small tube with metal. It could be a paper clip or something like that, but this metal is glued here. And then I have fishing line so that when that comes out, it pulls on the tooth and it will raise it out. Or when it goes back in, it comes back in like that. Okay, so here we can see the elastic string right here that's hooked to this. That elastic string goes all the way in, into the tube, up the upper the straw right there. And then it comes back here to where it actually is on this small metal that's actually uncoiled from this wire here to provide some spring so that when the servo pulls the mouth back in, it'll make those teeth go back in. So that's how I have that so the teeth go back in. The lower one, once I put the waterproofing stuff on the material, it just naturally just wants to stay there. So I took it off, even though you can see inside the mouth that there is a lower straw that was set up for this mouth to bring the teeth back in. I just use the foam clay to help shape these and just electrical conduit stuff to make that there. So this inner mouth has two orange fiberglass rods that are guided through these white PVC pipes here so that when the servo pushes and closes it, comes in and out like that, and it's guided through those two white tubes there. So we have the two battery packs that will actually be Velcroed in place on my shoulder. And as you can see, it works pretty good. The water, the drool is gravity fed. So if I put my head down, it will come out. If I tilt my head to one side, it'll kind of go to one side or the other side. And if I tip my head up, then, then I don't have to worry about the drool coming out anymore. But anyway, it's working pretty good.